Hey, what's going on? Justin here from Modern Mixing. So this quick tip uh, came from a series I put together called How to Mix an R&B Song. Uh, if you want to watch that full series, it's about 90 minutes or so, plus all the Pro Tool files and everything. Uh, just go in the description below, uh, click the link, and that'll bring you to my website, and then you can get all the stuff that you need there. So um, anyways, let's get right into it right now. Okay, so let's start with the bass line. So there's a couple things that we need to correct. Uh, there's a few issues in the bass line. And before we got to any effects, um, in this particular case, I used mostly distortion. Uh, I needed to fix those issues. And the way I did that was with clip gain. So there was some spiky issues, as you can see. A little bit of uh, transients as each note changed. I needed to fix that. And then also there was some volume issues. Like you can see in this section over here, um, the volume differences are quite dramatic. So I wanted to um, get everything as smooth and as even as possible so when you change from note to note there isn't a massive difference in volume between each note and um, the thing is the bass line is like the foundation of the track and that's one thing that um, you know you want to be as smooth as possible so that um, it kind of holds and glues the rest of the track together so the first thing I did was uh, was correct these spikes here so uh, well, first of all, there's there's a little bit of a glitch in Pro Tools. Like, it looks like all these spikes still exist, even though I corrected them. But uh, you'll see, like, as I zoom in, um, they sort of just seem to disappear. Even in this section over here with these major spikes over here, as I zoom in, you know, it's like they just seem to disappear. So there is some sort of glitch. I don't know what it is, but if Pro Tools can fix that, that would be nice. Okay, so... The first thing I want to do is I want to fix the spike. So what I would do is I would just go along. And uh, what you can do is I just kind of like to click sort of my the outside of my parameter. I know that this is sort of the parameter where I'm trying to fix. And then I click towards the beginning of the, the left parameter here that I drew with the node here. And then I click and then I just pull down. And then what I can do is I can just kind of move it around to change it to change the look of it and try to get the volume a little bit better, more consistent. That looks pretty good to me. So the next thing you'd want to do is you want to listen to it and just kind of make sure that, um, you know, you're not doing any damage to the, to the actual sound. In some cases, um, it makes it worse. And, you know, in often cases, it makes it better. But you just want to double check it, just listen to it before and after and, and see what it sounds like. So after I went there and corrected all those parts, I needed to work on the volume issue. So there was an issue here that I had to correct, but this is the most dramatic area here. So I basically did the same thing. You kind of just select, you know, your parameters. In this case, I'm going to need to do two things. Uh, I'm going to have to change the left side here by pulling it down and then also change the right side. So again, just click and then sort of just bring it down even it out it looks okay and then come to this side over here and then same thing just even it out and then you can zoom out just to kind of get a bigger picture and then correct things if you have to now over here it looks like you know this area is a little bit quieter so you can just draw in another node And then just bump it up if you have to. But again, I would listen to it and just kind of make sure what I was doing was actually sounding better and not worse. But uh, anyways, you can make that judgment call. So, and the same thing applies. So like on this area here, you know, I won't really work too hard on getting this one. But, you know, just bump it up. Same thing. And that's it. And then I would just level it. So now, once I finish all that, my bass line goes into my effects bin or my insert, uh, my inserts, and it goes in a little bit more consistent. So now if I want to add compression or EQ, I'm more focused on shaping the tone of the bass line as opposed to, you know, this part's a lot more quieter, so I need to hit the compressor really hard so that I can even it out. And then what happens is, 
just because one or one or two parts in your bass line is really quiet, now you have to hit the compression really hard. So now you're you're squishing the bass, and then you're you're losing a lot of that fullness in the bass that you know makes it sound really great and makes it sound um, you know big in the track. So by adding too much compression, sometimes you know it squishes it and then it kind of flattens it out and and it loses that roundness to it. So that's why uh, that's why the clip gain is so great. You can go in and fix things and correct things, and you can still stay as true true to the sound as you possibly can. So so yeah. So now let's move on to the effects of what I used on the bass line. Picture this: we just met and I assume you're crazy. You will wonder how I got this impression You will wonder what made me think this way Will you do it and now just assuming That I'm like all the other